When you start PowerStructure, the very first thing you do is choose a template. Now you're looking at PowerStructure on a Windows PC, but if you are a Mac user, don't worry. PowerStructure is a hybrid software program, which means it works equally well on a Mac as it does on a PC. You can see we have templates for writing novels, stage plays, screenplays, and TV shows. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose Novel. Each template has nine tabs at the top. These tabs represent nine different areas where you can structure your story. In this example, the first two tabs are Story Theme and Characters. Moving on, you see we have a Chapters tab, which makes sense since we are in the Novel template. Now each template has nine tabs, but the names of the tabs will vary based on the template you choose. Let me take a quick break to remind you that you can visit PowerStructure.com and download a free demo and read the entire PowerStructure manual. Let's look at a completed PowerStructure project. I'm going to open up the PowerStructure file for the film Aaron Brockovich. This file is included free with your copy of PowerStructure. Now Aaron Brockovich is a movie, so we're using a screenwriting template. You can see that with this template there are nine tabs, just like in the novel template we looked at earlier. This is the Scenes and Plot Points template, so we obviously have tabs called Scenes and Plot Points. Now you can start writing anywhere within a template and PowerStructure will keep everything organized. So if you'd like to write in the Scenes area, before you write a character, that's no problem. But to make it easy, I'm going to start with the Story Theme tab on the left and finish with the index cards on the right. The first tab is called Story Theme. If I click the drop down arrow here to the right, you can see there are several options. We've already filled in several, including Story Spine. You can use the ones that PowerStructure has created for you, or you can create your own. In this example, I'm going to create a new category called Logline. Logline is a common term used among screenwriters, and now I can write my own logline should I want. Notice there are major characters, subplot characters, and minor or other characters. You decide who's who. As a writer, you decide what to include and what not to include. In the film Aaron Brockovich, the title character has a lot of strong physical and personality traits. You can start with just the basics. Age, gender, profession, and a couple other things to know about the character. However, you can really drill down and learn more about your character. So for example with Aaron Brockovich, we learn about her physical characteristics, her desires and goals, her strengths and virtues, her faults and weaknesses, and even describing an entire character's arc throughout the story. And as always, you write what you wish. For minor characters, you may only write a little. For major characters, you might write an entire bio. Now the three-act structure, the beginning, the middle, and the end, has been taught since Aristotle. Many writers use it, and it's included in power structure. Notice though, you can add acts and customize power structure even further. In addition to writing general act information, and some information about what's needed to keep your story moving forward, you can also go into detail with your characters, plot arc, and all the plot points that, that are the building blocks of your story. The next tab is the Scenes tab. Now in screenplays, the scenes are the building blocks of the entire film. A scene has a beginning hook, an ending hook, it has conflict, and it moves the story forward. In almost all cases, a scene takes place in a single location, like a restaurant or someone's home. If you are writing a screenplay, this area may be where you spend most of your time. On the left here, you see all the scenes in the film Aaron Brockovich. We've numbered them, although you certainly don't have to. When you write a scene in power structure, you write the hook that opens the scene, you describe how the scene moves the story forward, you write what happens in the scene, and then you write the hook that ends the scene. The average screenplay has around 40 to 60 scenes, 
Aaron Brockovich is no different. You can see that there are 44 scenes identified here. Now sometimes you might write a scene that you later think would be better elsewhere. Perhaps you'd like to move your final scene elsewhere in your story. That's no problem. You can drag and drop any scene and reorder it in the timeline. Now in addition to writing the basic scene information, you can also start creating and writing plot points. To put it simply, a plot point is a twist in the action. So in the very first scene in Aaron Brockovich, two important things happen in the plot. The first plot point is where Aaron interviews for a job. She pushes her strengths. The second plot point is where she doesn't get the job. Both these plot points twist the plot in a new direction. In a screenplay, there could be hundreds of plot points. Let's jump to the plot points area to drill down even further into analysis. If you look to the left, you see a long list of plot points. As I click on each point, a short description of each one appears in the right. This is a pretty cool way to see everything important that happens in your story. But if you want to go into even further detail, you can click on a plot point and drill down. You can detail the conflict in this particular point, the story stage, the characters involved, and even detail what we call the ticking clock. This sets your story in motion. And remember, you do not have to do this for every plot point. Gestalt is a psychological term meaning unified whole. So far in Power Structure, we've looked at characters and acts and scenes and plot points. The Gestalt view shows how everything fits together. You can see we have a short description of each act, each scene in the act, each plot point within each scene, and then the individual plot point detail. You can see how your entire script or novel comes together with the Gestalt view. It's a great way to see the structure of your story and if you make changes in the Gestalt view here, or here, or here, the changes occur throughout your entire Power Structure file. Power Structure keeps everything synced up. The full screen view includes a drop down list of all your plot point headers and a big input field. You can choose a header from the list, and its detail text appears in the main input field where it can be edited. You can also create new plot points or change the header of the current one. Also, you can mark each plot point in various ways with the drop down menu in the upper right corner. For example, you might like the basic idea of your plot point but want to keep working on it later. Mark it as needs reworking. And if it's completed, mark it as completed. Throughout Power Structure, you can identify which plot points are completed or in various stages of work so you can find the ones to spend most of your time with. When you write in the index card view, you will see all your star stories plot points listed along with their respective scenes. You choose how many cards to view at once. Now you can do two cool things with Power Structure. The first is that if you want to rearrange the order of your plot points, you can just click on one with your mouse, hold it, and then reorder it. Note though that if moving the plot point is going to change and harm its relationship to later plot points, then Power Structure will tell you so. In this instance, it's telling us that the plot point, Ed assures Aaron that she has a great case, is based on an earlier plot point. If we change the order, then the story may not make any sense. So we're just going to leave it alone for now. Another thing you can do is segregate your story by categories. This is an easy way to keep track of different character stories and subplots and changes in structure. For example, I might want to put all Act 1 plot points in one category. So I can create a new category called Act 1, choose a color, and now we have a new category called Act 1. I can then drag plot points into this category, helping me further organize my story. Or maybe I want to segregate plot points by what character is driving that part of the story. Again, I can do the same, assign a color to it, and so now I can drag all the plot points where Ed drives the, the focus of that scene or the plot point there. You of course can do whatever you like. Well that brings us to the end of this quick walkthrough of Power Structure. If you'd like to learn even more about Power Structure, then please visit our website PowerStructure.com 
And if you have any questions at all, please email us at info at and we'll answer them the best we can. Thanks for your time.